Nemo here. How are we doing today? I hope you're doing fantastic, wonderful, and awesome. And welcome back to the Dream Machine. So, uh, <laughs> Mr. Martin, what happened to you? Why did you fall on the floor? What is that machine? And why are we suddenly in a dreamscape? <laughs> Let's get into it and find out, shall we? So I should be able to talk to this one. I guess I can't talk to him. Well, there's rocks. Maybe I was supposed to put the rocks inside the thing right here. Oh. I'm guessing this is what I'm supposed to do. Oh, okay. That seems to be triggered something. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, hey! What's up? Who goes there? My name is Victor Neff, sir. And why have you disturbed me in my sleep, Victor Neff? I'm sorry, sir. I'm trying to find someone, but I don't know where I am. What is this place? Tell you what. If you do me a favor, I'll give you the answers you seek. What do you want me to do? I can barely see you down there, Victor. My eyes aren't what they used to be. Well, because there's an eye inside there, so he needs better eyes. If you help me see you sharply again, I'll answer your questions. Deal? Uh, I mean, I don't, got, I don't have anything else I gotta do, I don't believe, at the moment, so... Sure. I will be here if you need me. Well, some, uh... Here you go. It's like a contact. <laughs> here. Wait, is this the left eye? No, this is the right eye. That's how you make baby lenses? What? That's not the left eye. Am I wrong? I mean that... Okay, if this person were turning around, right is right here and left is right here. This technically would be the left eye. So, I think I need to put the left lens in the right eye. That's better. But I still can't see you clearly. Well, be patient. I'm working on it. So that's what you look like, Victor. Hey, what's wrong with what I look like? I'm very fashionably dressed, thank you very much. My hair is perfect. Don't mind the sweat stain on the back. Is that what passes for a hair- God, dude! Is that what passes for a hairstyle these days? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I feel a little self-conscious now, but thanks. Things have certainly changed since my day. But thank you for helping me see. Who are you? I'm Eldon Morton. I'm the head of the Morton family. Oh, are you his dad? At least I used to be. You're not part of the family any longer? Of course I am, but the responsibility as head has since passed to the younger generation. I don't know where I am, dude. You're in the shared unconsciousness, a place whose existence I postulated a long time ago. But I can't say exactly where. So this is like... Kind of a... I want to say like a hub world, almost? For uh, when people use the dream machine. But anyway, that's my... That's what I think. I'm not familiar with the terrain, and there aren't many landmarks to go by. So you don't even know exactly where you are. 
Interesting. Is this place real? It's not an actual place. It's more along the lines of Plato's concept of idea space. Okay. Let me see it, yeah. Have you read Plato? I mean, I haven't read Plato, but heard of him, and I do know that he had a concept of where human thought resided and how it worked. Plato assumed that everything we think and feel originates from a place. Yeah, I can agree with that. Like, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take a, take a minute here. So, one of the concepts I've always thought of is that everything that humanity creates, you know, everything that we think of, everything we dream of, everything we put on paper, put in writing, flashes through our heads comes from one place or it comes from somewhere where it does exist but not in our dimension or not in our way of thinking not in our not in a way that we can interact with immediately aside from how it comes into our minds like this this whole game comes from someone who imagined it up but what if imagination was more like we saw gl we see glimpses in our mind of something else that exists that we can't come in contact with because we're on a different plane of existence you know just like things like that like imagine your favorite book character your favorite anime character your favorite game character where did they come from you know one day the person just thought of it okay cool but what gave us our imagination what where does our imagination come from? What linking points in our brains decided, okay, I'm going to make this person that looks this way, that has this backstory, and put them into existence, and it be a cohesive project. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> I think all of our thoughts and ideas and everything do come from real things that we just can't be a part of yet. Anyway, back to the game. <laughs> A place we all tap into without being aware of it. Mm -hmm. That's why we can have thoughts or feelings that we've never had or heard before. Imagination. So in the realm where ideas come from? Yes, among other things. Every person has their own allotted piece of this place. But the pieces overlap and every piece is part of a greater whole the shared consciousness unconscious now tell me what do you require of me information motherfucker you seem pretty learned okay trying to find a man named felix morton felix i've never heard of him he must have been before my time or after so are you like a being that would you just not know what, uh, how much time has passed or are you just <laughs> are you just like an enigma like you will exist at one point but it could be past or present to the current point interesting i wish there was more i could do for you hey dude you're providing me with conversation this is a lonely place uh your kudos kudos and I get the feeling you don't talk to very many people. I hope I'm doing the same for you. I'm sure I'll manage somehow. Good luck. Nighty night, bro. Why can't I still examine the eye? That's weird. Okay. Can I examine the right? Yeah, okay. Alright, so... That got me no closer to what the fuck I'm supposed to do, but, you know, I got a little bit of information about the place. Now I, <laughs> now I know it's not so, uh, so desolate. So, let's go in the middle again. Hey, buddy, I'm back! How you doing? Oh. Oh, so the, is there a hatch on every one of them? Strum rods. 
that didn't sound right. So do I need to hammer it with a hammer? Hmm. Oh. Okay, so I don't need the anvil. Or syrup. So, oh, can I pull... Yeah, okay, so I can set this down and then hammer it. Okay. Oh, so were they working on this giant? And they just didn't finish? They died first? It's kind of sad. I'll take the anvil with me. You never know if I need an anvil. Might be a cartoon moment. Alright. This should help you speak. <laughs> Lovely. Hello, my dear. Can you talk to me now? Should I do the same voice? I don't know if it's a male or a female. Who goes there? Why have you disturbed me in my sleep? My name is- Oh, it's a guy. Well, you know what? They have a soft voice. My name is Victor Neff, sir. What? Okay, they, they haven't even said one fucking one word to me. What the hell? You're not being very helpful. Neither are you. Oh, I guess that... Oh, okay. Huh. I fixed your vocal cords, whatever those rods in your throat are. Yes. Yes, I guess you did. So... So what? You owe me some answers. Come on, man, pay up. What would you like to know? Who are you, really? My name was Ainsley Morton was? Yes. I died quite a while ago, I'm afraid. What you see in front of you isn't actually me. Then what is it? It's a monument. No shit. <laughs> Seen a shifty looking older guy walk past here? I'm asleep mostly. I don't see much of anything. Who are you looking for? A guy called Felix Morton. I have reason to believe he's in here somewhere. Felix? What has he done now, the useless prat? You know him? Of course I do. He's my grandson. I wish he wasn't, but a rotten egg is better than no egg at all. Jeez, hate much? You don't like your own grandson? No, he lacks conviction. He'll be the end of it all. It's his father's fault, really. Too soft on him, you see. Oh, you're a boomer. Me, I tried to cane him any chance I got. You're a terrible person. You physically abused your fucking girl. That's fucked up. God. It builds character. Yeah, and that's why your line of thinking is no longer prevalent in this world. I tried to beat some sense into the boy, but his father was too soft, I tell you. Too damn soft. Seen your grandson recently? I'm mostly asleep these days. If he walked past here, he had the common courtesy not to wake me up, unlike some people. Also, he doesn't talk to me much anymore. You know what? I fucking wonder why. Dick. What do you know about him? He was a useless mongrel then. He's probably just as useless now. Actually, I mean, he's seems pretty capable. He's running this house, alright. Well, from... What I see, anyways, he's just peeping Tom. 
Whatever your beef is with young Felix, I suggest you let it rest. Trying to get a sensible answer out of that boy is like trying to melt a stone. He doesn't owe you money, does he? Ah, uh, it's not about the money. Then you can count your lucky blessings about one thing at least. Now, if you'll excuse me, my eternal sleep is well deserved and long overdue. No, wait! If Felix is in here, how do I find him? The correct order will lead you there. Order of what? Uh, I gotta run in the right portal order! Damn. That's all you'll get from me, you useless motherfucker! Good luck, Mr. Knight. <sighs> Bitch. Yeah. Okay, so I gotta figure out the order. Uh, this leads me back to him, so... I gotta help this person. Is there a hatch? Well, the hatch is right there. It's something to do with his ear. Okay, maybe I have to strike it with a hammer? Oh! It's the bones in your ear! They're all called, like, the stirrup, the hammer, and the anvil. Yeah, um, fuck, how do those go together? Because, like, okay, the smallest bones in your body are literally the ones that are right in your ear. And they vibrate against the muscle tissue in there, and that's how you hear. So if you have damage to those bones, like, you can't hear very well. So, how did that go? It's like... Anvil, hammer, stirrup. Okay. Probably anvil, stirrup, hammer. No, okay. Okay, so anvil's not first. We'll we'll do this by so we'll do the hammer first. Stirrup. Anvil. No. Anvil. Stirrup. Okay, so stirrup, anvil. Yeah, there we go. Ah, I don't remember the voice I gave him. Hey, I can hear again. Thank you, whoever you are. Uh, cool, awesome sauce. Want to talk to me now? I can't thank you enough, young man. You look like a baby. What's your name? My name is Victor Sneff, sir. But what is this place? It's the subconscious realm of dreams. My son's dreams to be more specific. <laughs> okay, so you're his dad. So you're is your brain in the machine, sir? That's what I want to know. Your son? Yes, Felix Morton. Have you met him? I'm trying to plan him, but this place is a bit of a maze. Oh god, I'm not gonna insult his son because he seems kinda chipper about it, so I kinda need to be nice, I think. I wish I could help you with that, but this place shifts a lot. To create a maze inside one's subconscious requires a lot of willpower. If Felix is in here hiding from you, I don't think you're going to be able to find him. I don't think he's hiding. I think he was attacked somehow. He's bleeding. In that case, I wish you the best of luck. So you're not going to even help your son? What the fuck? Wait, how do I friend Felix? He's the last in the line of the Mortons. Get to him last. Good luck, Mr. Neff. Wait, I think I know. Okay, so... This is his father. Uh, the one that was in the middle is his um, his grandfather. And the one in the front is probably like great grandfather or someone. Like that. Or that's his kid. One of the two. Or, well, no, he doesn't have a kid. Or he does have a kid. Okay, so 
if I go back through here, that's gonna take me to the main. Let me see. That takes me back here. Let me walk through it again and see. Yeah, okay, so this one leads right here. Where does this take me? That takes me back to this dude. So let's go back in there. What does this one lead me? Right here, okay, so. So, if I've got this correct, this one looks the most decrepit, but this also looks like him. So, I'm wondering if this is his kid. Because he had that small kid's chair in there, but he doesn't have anything else. I really think that that's his kid. So, the fourth store we're going to go through is this one. Well, we need to go through this one. Okay. It's grandfather. And then... If we go back in there, is that going to take that to the grandson? No. Okay, I fucked it up. Okay. Alright, so... Hmm. Let's go through this one first. And then... This one. And then this one? No. Okay. This one leads me there, but what if... Hold on. I'll figure this out, don't worry. Which one was the baby? The baby was this one, right? No. Idiot. Oh! I found it by accident! <laughs> oh, that's loud. Okay. You can't threaten with me with that anymore. I know what I've done. I'm prepared to accept the consequences. Be but not before I shut you down. I'll cut out- I'll cut you out of every dream if I have to. That was not a smart choice, bro. Grab the axe. Mr. Morton! Help! You gonna peep on this anymore? <laughs> Kill Mr. Morton's tentacle. The little mouth at the end of the tentacle. Ooh. It's lined with hooked teeth. Ooh, even more. It's like a lamprey. Hello again, Miss Neff. Oh, you look younger. I guess you're wondering why you're here. What is this place? You're standing in the dreamscape, Miss Neff. Living, breathing, am <laughs> amalgamation of billions of sleeping minds. Each adding to their own distinct piece to the puzzle. All connected, belonging to the same world. I'm inside a dream? I mean, I figured that was what the deal was. You're in my dream, as a matter of fact. It doesn't always look like, like, the, look like this. It changes slightly each night. But this is where I come when I dream. How did I get here? Each sleep in mind is an entryway to a different part of the dreamscape. By using the helmets, you've projected your consciousness into my sleeping mind. That's how you ended up here. It's the purpose of the large machine in the basement. It synchronizes the brain waves of two connected minds, making it making it impossible to project an awake mind into a sleeping one if you're doing as you're doing so right now. Would you build it? Only parts of it. My family has been trying to chart the dreamscape for the past four generations. My great-grandfather first po posited the idea that we all visit a collective consciousness in our sleep. He wanted to explore it to see if he had the coherent geography. Does it? 
Yes, but it's ever-changing, ever-evolving. As people die, we lose parts of it. As new people are born, new areas appear. It's roughly disc-shaped. Okay. So... Hmm. I like that concept that it's not something that will always stay the same. Like, it has the same idea, but as people are born and as people leave the world, it changes. Now, I like that. I like that idea. As you were born, you appear in the center, moving outward as you age. Eventually reaching the thin, crumbling edge as your life comes to an end. How does a machine like that work? To be honest, I don't fully understand it myself. My great-grandfather built the first prototype. It was crude, barely providing a keyhole's peek into the sleeping mind. I did hear that uh, there is technology that's actually been built to get a glimpse into people's dreams. And I wouldn't mind using that tech. I mean, I'd be nervous as hell because I have some pretty fucking weird dreams. But to go back and watch your dream, I'd be like, oh yeah. Because I don't know about you, but I forget at least 50 to 70% of my dream whenever I wake up, which is normal. But, I don't know, I'd, I'd love to remember my dream to completion. Like, from the time I fall asleep to, and ha start having the dream, to the time I wake up. Which, I heard something like dreams only last, like, five or ten minutes, but they seem like forever. And you have multiple dreams. So, that's interesting. My grandfather improved the design. By synchronizing the brain waves of the connected minds. My father and I added parts here and there, mainly increasing performance and stability. So your family's been building this thing for four generations. I was raised from an early age to continue my father's work, my family's work. My father instructed me how to operate the machine. Occasionally, he brought me along with him into the dreamscape. Aw, some father-son bonding time. How lovely. Can you imagine what that was like for a child? Honestly, personally, I think that'd be fucking awesome. I'd be like, reality sucks, let's go! <laughs> Having people's dreams to play in. I mean, after a while, I imagine you get kind of addicted, because normal life is pretty mundane. There's not anything fantastical to it that we have found yet. It's just pretty much between our limitations of our own mortality and physics, um, the concept of physics and that and dreams just, it's different. It's unique. It's more promising than what we have here. So to have a kid with their childlike mind, their imagination, to be put into a place where everything is limitless, especially if it's in somebody else's dream. I mean... A lot of mischief would happen, because you know little kids, they're going to be like, huh, I know what you dreamed, that was a weird dream, I saw you in your underwear, you know. You, you, little kids, they're going to, or kids, they're going to make jokes about that. They're going to be like, huh, you know, I know my kids, I know that if they had the chance, they would go and make fun of a person for what's in their dreams. But, at the same time, if you give a child that limitless canvas to do what they want and it's real you remember it you're able to be in this atmosphere where anything is possible a child would kind of want to stick to that as they grow up they don't want to stick in the mundane world where you have to work to get anything and hardly anything is worth it anymore so i mean personally i would love to be in his position i wouldn't be doing what he was doing by collecting dreams of others but i'd be like hey let me go in your dream. You can come in mine. Mind the trauma. <laughs> but anyway. So who were you talking to, bud? I was talking to the machine. It has organic parts and has, after a dec decade of refinement, reached some degree of awareness. So I was right. There might be a brain in there, like monitoring everything, getting everything set to, uh, to where people can go in it. I've learned to communicate with it after all these years. 
A talking machine? It's not really talking. It's more like a whisper in the back of your mind. Who attacked you in the basement? It was the machine. Recently, we've had differing opinions on how to proceed. A situation that culminated once you discovered my camera, Miss Smith. What was the argument about? Lately, our operation has been getting harder and harder to keep under wraps. I wanted to put it on hold while I sorted things out. But the machine wouldn't let me. I was trying to shut it down. But it attacked me. It wants to continue its purpose. Awareness and self-preservation go hand in hand, unfortunately. I wish I could explain it all at greater length, but I'm fading. I'm afraid I won't be with you much longer. Dreams can't hurt you, can they? I mean, there is cases where... Oh. Okay, so the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I don't know how many of you guys know this, but... It was based off of a true story where these kids were talking about seeing some sort of man in their dreams and these kids would die. So, uh, and night terrors, I mean, like, there's instances where night terrors are so bad with children that the kids would die in their sleep of fear. So dreams can hurt you, in a sense. It's more of like a you get overworked enough to where your, your heart gives out or your brain goes into enough shock that your body shuts down. Anyway. Dreams can alter your perception of reality. They can change your life. And they can certainly hurt you. People die in their sleep all the time. Oh, that makes me wonder. I mean, that would be interesting if the reason why people pass on in their dreams is pass on in their sleep is because something in their dream happened to end them. So, in that whole thing, oh, at least they pass peacefully in their sleep. Maybe not. What was that tentacle thing that grabbed you? The tentacles are the roots of the machine. An extension of it, if you will. The machine resides in both dreams and reality at once. The thing you saw in the basement is but half of it. So it's bigger than what you think? Oh yeah, because that that uh, picture showed something huge. It didn't show that little thing with the wild-looking wires. That's interesting. The roots beside, reside here and draw power from the dreamscape. I thought dreams were just a wish, all about wish fulfillment, not actual plays. You're not alone in thinking that. Freud, for instance, was the originator of that particular idea. But as you can see around you, you're both quite wrong. I'm feeling weak. But before I leave you, there's something I have to ask. If I could do it myself, I would. But I don't have long. I need you to shut the machine down once and for all. How do I do that? By cutting off its power supply. The tentacle you saw was one of its roots. That's how it draws power from the dreamscape. But I already chopped it off there's more. By now the tentacles have spread to others in the estate. You must enter their dreams just like you entered mine and make sure you can draw power there and make sure it can't draw power there anymore. Why can't I just smash the machine? The machine is more than just a clunky thing in the basement. It would be like getting rid of a tick without removing the head. Ouch. Once the dreams are purged, the machine will shut down properly. Will you grant me this, my dying wish? I mean, okay. He has no reason to lie to me right now. Obviously, I have proof that this dream place exists. That everything he's saying is true. I mean... I'm not going to be an ass about it be like, mm, I don't fucking trust you. I'll be like, okay, dude. But at the same time, it depends on what this machine is doing with the dreams. Is it simply indulging them because it wants to exist and it wants to further, you know, further its means? I mean, imagine if you're a machine, you don't really have uh, 
access to the outside world to see how it's developing, how it's changing, you know, updating, you're always going to have that same amount of information. So by going through other people's dreams, you sort of start to learn about the world around you since you can't get up and go do it yourself. So, I mean, it's like I'm with the machine in the aspect that they have a right, the machine has a right to exist too. It might be a, a mix of parts and organs and whatever, but it has a consciousness. It has will. It may not be able to speak, you know, more than that whisper, but it still is alive in a sense. So is it right to take it out? I think I need to know more about why that doesn't need to happen. Yeah, here, I'm gonna ask that. Does the machine really have to be switched off? Your wife has been infected as well since I visited her dreams last night. Dude, we need to talk about that. That was traumatizing for her. You crawled out of a place you shouldn't have crawled out of. So, uh, that kind of fucked up, dude. If you won't do it for me, at least do it for her. You're dying anyway, why do you care? I don't want this tragedy my, to be my family's legacy. I'm the last in the line of Mortons. With me, my family perishes. What are you going to tell the world about us once we're gone? Mm. <sighs> That's tough because the way they went about looking at it was sketchy. But I imagine back then they did dream studies on willing participants. So it's only really him that kind of did the sketchy thing, but it looks like he was kind of forced to. All they wanted to do was learn. And you have to break some things in order to learn things. You have to challenge shit and put your morals aside a little bit in order to understand the world around you. So... Like, as of right now, I'm going to say they were scientists and explorers of the mind, because technically that's what they were doing. So, I'm going to say that. I'm going to I'm gonna be nice and say that. Thank you, Mr. Niff. I'll rest easier knowing that. This is where I must leave you, I'm afraid. I wish I had more, more time to set this right. Set this straight. <laughs> I can't read today. Sorry. But you don't get to choose these things. I'm afraid not. Goodbye, Mr. Neff. Goodbye, Mr. Morton. Oh. I mean, it is kind of a beautiful place, place to pass, at least, I think, with all the clouds around you. Oh, and then that just shuts off. Damn. So I need to keep this. Mr. Morton has passed away. Damn. Like, okay, I feel bad for calling him like a pervert and everything. I knew what he was checking on for their dreams and everything, but he's not a bad person. He died trying to shut the machine down, yeah. Well, now I can get a smeared ink on his palm. Not the palm print. Sorry, Mr. Morton. You will not have died in vain. Okay, so. <laughs> Glad that worked. <laughs> Technology man. Kind of high tech for this time period, though. Though I'm not entirely sure what this time period is. It's close enough to where landline landlines were still pretty prevalent. Okay. So, <laughs> gotta look in the trash. Contains the remains of burned papers, mostly. Looks like Mr. Morton was trying to destroy evidence before he died. Most of it is completely destroyed, but this little piece seems readable. Oh, it's a safe code. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that matches the thing that I wrote, uh, wrote earlier. So, corner, corner. 
So left, right, left, up, right, up, left, up, left. Oh, yeah, oh. Seems to be a key inside of the safe. I think I'm missing some part of the puzzle there. Hold on. Let's see what this is. Indicator. Seems an indicator of some kind. Needle seems to indicate that the machine is empty. Turning the dials. Oh, wait, 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 what was that, what was that, what was that? This lot seems to be designed to hold a cylindrical object of some kind. There's a powdery residue on the inside of the funnel. This shit looks complicated! Okay. Let's look at TV screens. Oh, that's not good. Okay, so... This camera monitors someone's living room. I belong to someone on the third floor. This is somebody's bedroom. I don't know whose apartment it belongs to. Okay, so I'm gonna get- yeah, this is our bedroom right here. There's Mrs. Neff. And then I'm gonna guess that- or not Mrs. Neff, what is it? Enid. I'm gonna guess that, that might be Enid's one too, because I, I don't think that's my house. So why did he have the cameras down here? Just to make sure that nobody would come in? Anyway. Third floor. Judging by the old photos on the walls, it might be Edie's. That's our bedroom. Mr. Morton watched us when we slept last night. I feel uncomfortable looking at this. I don't know if you guys weren't doing anything unsavory in that bed. This camera overlooks someone's dining room. If I'm not mistaken, this is our next door neighbor's bridge party. Oh, Edie! I like Edie. This camera looks overlooks the lobby. Okay. Mr. Morton probably monitored the coming and going of the tenants. The mover is still on his lunch break, apparently. Yeah, you know, what the fuck? Gas? I'm not gonna press the button. No, 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 no. This hallway looks like ours, except it's mirrored and has more furniture. That belongs to somebody on the top floor. Okay. The slanted window suggests that this room is on the top floor. There's a guy in the wheelchair looking through a telescope. Oh, that's my other neighbor. So, is this, uh... Wait. These have numbers. I just realized that. One, two, three... Or it's eight. Oh, it might be five. Okay, I'm not gonna press gas. Who's use telephone? Oh, I could change the channel. Is that a leash in there? Oh, it is. I can see the phone and the boxes there on the floor. That means he's got more cameras rigged up in our apartment. What the fuck, dude? This is beyond creepy. Uh, Alicia? Did she just get possessed? What happened to her? Okay, so I need to find some way to get back to Alicia. Sounds like they just knocked her out. Uh, the machine just knocked her out. So no, this piece, this piece is blank. Oh, is this the dreamscape? I guess this area hasn't been charted yet. So it says Alicia Neff. Mr. Morton visited her dream last night as we slept. 
I'll never be able to forgive him for that. Yeah, that that is something that's a tad bit unforgivable, but I'm still gonna try to do his dying wish and I don't think he was a bad person. I think he was just a little bit misguided and he was under the thumb of whatever the hell this uh, machine is. Edie Jones. Okay, she's been our next door neighbor. She's been living here for quite some time. Mr. Morton has plenty of time to invade her dreams. Selma Feed. She must live on the top floor. She's another tenant Mr. Morton has been visiting. Martin Willard. She must live on the top floor. Another person. And so, if I understood Mr. Morton correctly, this is a map of the dreamscape. That's where we go when we sleep. Mr. Morton's family has been trying to chart it for generations. But how do you chart something that's very... that changes constantly? That's probably why the map has been modified so much. He said we're born somewhere in the center. Our baby. He knew, oh, he knew that the baby was coming because she's pregnant. No baby clothes and all that. That right there is the baby. <coughs> Excuse me. And move outward as we age. So Edie's is pretty outward. These guys are either around the same age as us. Oh, this uh, He's probably a little bit older. But Sola is either younger than us or she's around the same age. Hmm. That is an interesting concept. I like that. So I imagine the key to get out of here is in this safe. So... Look at this again. New safe code. And then I have the this one that I did earlier, so hmm. Oh, I just realized there's little things in it, okay. So Nine. I need one for the bottom one, so yeah, I need I need So nine, three, nine, six, one, one, nine, three, nine, six, one, one. Yes! I am Smarticles! Okay. Pick up the master key. Why is there a red dot right there? Not a thing. Okay. So. Let's get the fuck out of Dodge and we'll figure out what happened to my wifey poo. Honey. Yes, enter the apartment. Enter the enter apartment. There we go. Oh, honey kittens, are you all right? She seems to have fallen asleep, just like Mr. Morton did. I'm unable to wake her. Yeah, because he did some fucking voodoo mind trick and knocked her ass out. So let's put this on. Oh, we're gonna go see a dream! Sorry about this, Alicia. I feel weird about peeping around inside your dream. I don't see any other way to help you right now. Oh, I hope we don't find out some kind of freaky subconscious crap from her. 
I'll see you on the other side. Ah, oh, that shriek! End of chapter two. Wow, okay. <laughs> that was an interesting- oh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another glorious evening ab aboard the SS Albatross. We are hoping you're enjoying your cruise so far. In a moment, we will start serving the evening meal in the dining hall. On behalf of the crew aboard, we wish to we wish you a continued pleasant journey. Cool. This must be the leisure cruise Alicia talked about during breakfast. Looks like she's having the same dream again. Hey, at least I didn't come out, you know. At least I didn't traumatize her that way. I need to find the machine's root and cut it out of the dream. I better find Alicia as well. She might be able to help me. Alright. Chapter 3, A Boat Beneath the Sunny Sky. But we will get to that chapter in the next episode. Uh, <laughs> this, this chapter feels a little bit shorter than the first one did, but that might also be because I was wandering around going, what the fuck do I do? But uh, I actually, I like how this is picking up. I like the whole concept that this is driving towards. I was thinking it was more of like, you know, oh, he's, he's going to fall asleep and he just dream hops that way. No, he's gotta go in and has an actual purpose of being in there, not just to escape the dream. So yeah, all good stuff. All good stuff. Um. <laughs> just the whole... I'm just thinking of the whole concept in my head about like the dreamscape and everything. I mean, that's, that's interesting that they're trying to chart something that's literally will constantly change. But, uh, we'll leave more about this mystery for the next time. I hope you guys are having fun. I'm enjoying it, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.